All right, so here we are, the start of turn two after the Confederate move. Um, also, for some fun, I made some casualty tables so I can track casualties each turn, since each turn represents uh, about eight minutes of time. So in the first eight minutes of the assault on Devil's Den and Little Round Top, um, the Confederates have lost seven strength points and one gun. So it's 105 men total and one gun. And the Union has lost four strength points and one gun, so that's about 60 casualties and one gun. So in eight minutes, we got about 165 casualties and two cannons down. And uh, we are going to do the next eight minutes of battle, roughly. Um, so, figured out some things I did really wrong. Right here we have uh, Major, uh, I think it's Stoughton, I can't remember, but he's the, uh, I can't read it at my age. <laughs> this guy right here, what does that say? Yeah, Stoughton. Uh, Major Stoughton is going to get overrun there because when you melee an officer hex and the 15th Alabama has a melee order right here so they'll be able to melee that officer and capture him so not very smart to leave him there for that extra turn. Uh, this flank over here only has a, about 15 men guarding that flank and I think there's like another 45 men there but as you can see they are uh, they are in big trouble. Um, the uh, Texas Brigade has come on the board, uh, Hood's Old Brigade. Uh, oh, you know what I did forget? I forgot. I'll have to add them after this video, but I forgot the uh, Brigadier. So he would, uh, well, actually we'll just put him on right there. You want him as close as you can because everybody within three of him gets bonus command points. And uh, that is not Hood, but Robertson that's in charge of that brigade. It was Hood's brigade back in the day, but he's now a divisional commander, I believe. So, so here they come. Now, here's the one thing I noticed. Uh, for some reason, I felt like it took a while for the Confederates to get up here. And um, they're going to be moving pretty fast. So it's going to be like another 15 minutes after this turn of, of game time, and they are going to be on the Union lines. So... It does not take that long for them to get there. So that was the moves. I'm going to go through and do the fire. Other than that, nothing else on the board has changed. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see if the Union can pepper them with enough fire. But I'd, uh, I'd say I'd be a little nervous with that many uh, Rebels coming across the field at me with not much of a line there since this is the extreme Union left as of this moment. So, anyway... I will uh, I will do the combat and then I will get back to you and let you see what you think of that. Hey everybody, well, welcome back for the uh, top part of uh, turn two. So uh, we're probably, I guess, probably about 12 minutes into the fighting because each turn is eight minutes. So let's just say it's been four minutes on the first half. Uh, Robertson Brigade had pushed up here. Uh, Law's Brigade was pushing up in here. And so we still had our combat to do. So the Confederates took another loss in artillery. Both sides lost um, about four strength points, or it was exactly four each. So that's another 60 casualties in, in uh, four minutes for uh, stragglers wounded and killed. And you can see here, I'm going to be careful so I don't bump my power button like I keep doing. But you can see here there's elements of the second U.S. sharpshooter are basically starting to fall back here and uh, retreat and they're also ineffective this one's ineffective this one's ineffective i believe he's ineffective and this is the only one that's left so um the uh, leader got captured here major stoughton i think is his name and um, there wasn't a lot of casualties in this area there was a little bit here on the 124th new york they've suffered a an ineffective one there now so you can see that uh, let's see i'm gonna see if i can zoom in just a little bit more um, a little bit of disorder here. You can see some ineffectives that are starting to build up for the Confederates. This stack has a lot of problems going on. It's a pretty good stack. Um, probably the biggest highlights was Major uh, Staunton being captured here. So there's going to be a replacement union, and we'll get their names in a minute. But the biggest thing, uh, the uh, change to our history that we'll have is, uh, I believe it was right over here. Right here, uh, Colonel Oates was killed in a melee 
uh, take, getting over this fence line and driving off the second U.S. sharpshooters here. Uh, a couple companies of those, but he was uh, killed in the melee. So Colonel Oates is dead, and we'll see. Uh, I guess we can go over the replacements. So Colonel Oates gets replaced by Lieutenant Colonel Fegan. And Captain Powell will take over for the Major. Uh, remember, this is one of those ones that I had to make by hand. I did buy a set on Board Game Geek, so when that gets here, I'm going to swap out the uh, homemade counters I made so that they're all good counters. And maybe we'll get rid of the ugly uh, stain. So, <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for watching. I am going to work on the Union uh, part of Turn 2 next, and then uh, I'll, I'll bring it back to show you the movement. And then we'll do the combat. So, and we'll keep probably doing it that way for now. Uh, I think the yeah the union uh, gets some reinforcements. So, we'll see what we'll see what happens there, and we'll uh, we'll continue from there. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here's like an overall shot. Uh, not a lot has changed, uh, but we do have a new unit coming in here. Sorry, the 99th Pennsylvania. Uh, they came in on area A, so they're kind of shifting. And what I thought I'd do with them, uh, it more or less, is kind of just bring them up in here and see how things develop. So if this flank can hold well, we're good. Um, I'm a little concerned about here. There's a lot of bodies um, uh, in this area here. So if it gets ugly, then these guys can go ahead and maybe come over here and start to secure up this flank on Devil's Den and see if we can buy a little time. The uh, second U.S. sharpshooters, they kind of act as independent units. Uh, the one that's out of ammo there tried to do some gathering, and since they weren't able to um, find any ammo, they uh, continued to move further uh, up the slope of Big Round Top. And then these two units kind of fell back and got repositioned to be a, basically a glorified speed bump. There's only two little pockets of 15 guys there. And then, uh, as we talked about earlier... Uh, Captain Powell took over, and he had that's the only unit he could go to because he has to go to the first effective unit that's not disordered. And uh, he kind of pulled back to be the flank. So I'm thinking the fourth main here will probably hold on a little bit longer, see what one more turn looks like, and maybe start to fall back uh, along the Devil's Den and the Slaughter Pen a little bit and uh, just try to ease some of the burden of all this wave of uh, rebels coming. So the, the next video when we come back, uh, will be after everyone is fired. Oh, the uh, 86th uh, New York here uh, pushed up onto the stone wall a little bit. Uh, it's pretty slow going in there with that, so I'm not sure that was a great idea to get myself into that quagmire. I was thinking moving point-wise I could probably get up to that wall, but I didn't want to double time it twice and have morale issues. So we only have uh, about half the regiment on the stone wall. So what's that, 7, 11, I don't know, what's that, 150, 165 guys maybe on the wall? So that's not great out of 300 something, so we'll see. And there is a lot of Texans and uh, um, pretty much all Texans come in there. The Arkansas guys are going straight up toward the 4th uh, Main. So anyway, that is the end of movement, and uh, I will do some shooting, and then I will... Uh, uh, get back to you after the shooting and any melee. I don't. There's not going to be any melee, so it'll just be defensive fire, and then offensive fire by the north. Thanks for joining. Hey everybody, welcome back to the end of turn two. Um, just kind of zoom in on the action here a little bit. We talked earlier about uh, Oates has been killed. Uh, we had another Union uh, general up here of the 124th New York. It's uh, Colonel Ellis. Uh, he got wounded. So he got wounded up there. You can see some of the 124th uh, running off. Uh, some of the 86th New York already took off a running with a bad roll. Uh, we got the uh, 99th Pennsylvania, I think it is, coming in there. Not sure on the um, limbered up guns they seem to move slower than infantry that seems kind of weird to me but uh, uh, that's what I've been able to figure out uh, we got some replacement leaders that got placed down there we got Captain Paul we talked about 
Um, here's Robertson's brigade uh, pushing up the hill a little bit. Uh, kind of concerned about the number of Confederates coming. But both sides are starting to get some ineffective units, which is going to affect things. And you can see there's a lot more of the disorder markers. And I think Vincent's boys are going to start coming in up on that corner over there. And to kind of go over some of the stats, um, so, so far the uh, Union has lost 150 men and one gun. That's in the about 16 minutes of game time. Uh, the second U.S. sharpshooter, Major Stoughton, was captured uh, just recently, and Ellis was wounded recently, so just, just this last turn. So 150 casualties and a gun. The Confederates have taken uh, 225 casualties and two guns, and we talked about General Oates was killed on uh, earlier as well. So things are starting to mount up. We're gonna, I'm going to move into turn three. Um, we'll see how things kind of pan out. We're going to see uh, Law's Brigade's going to start pushing in. I think I'm just going to push in through those trees um, and try to come around the slaughter pen if I can. And, uh, and Robertson's Brigade's just going to keep slamming up there, try to hit those guns and those units in the woods. And I just don't see how those northern guys are going to be able to hold. I mean, A, the quality of those Confederates. There's a lot of A's there for morale against a lot of B's and C's. And then they're just big regiments, right? Like there's a lot of sixes, sevens, and fives. Or if you look at the northern ones, there's a lot of threes and fours in this area. Even some twos down over here. So I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. I think the best thing for the for the uh, north at this time is probably this area of woods right here that they can um, that's going to slow down the advance, but the Confederates can't really bottleneck everybody this way. You know, if they bottle up in there, that's going to be a problem. So we'll uh, we'll push through and see how it goes, and uh, we'll probably start trying to do some double times with the Confederates once they get through these last of the sharpshooter skirmishes, and, and we'll kind of go from there. So hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching.